This is the Nissan Qashqai, but not as you know it. Yes, there's a turbo petrol engine under the bonnet of this small SUV, but it does not drive the wheels. No, in this unusual range extender EV, that's the job of an electric motor that's powered by a small battery, which in turn is charged by the engine. The result is lower fuel consumption and an EV-like driving experience. But is it worth the $4,200 price premium? That's what I'm here to find out. But before we do, don't forget to like, subscribe, and let me know what you think. Leave a comment below. Unlike the bigger X-Trail e-Power, there's only one top-spec Qashqai e-Power variant available in Australia right now, and it only has one electric motor driving the front wheels, not two. And the new Qashqai flagship will cost you around 55k once on-road costs are added, which is a lot of money for a compact SUV. Rivals include the Toyota Corolla Cross Hybrid and Hyundai Kona Hybrid, so what's the difference between Nissan's e-power technology and a normal hybrid? Well, a standard hybrid like uh, a Toyota Corolla Cross has a combustion and an electric motor that can run in tandem and sometimes independently. This one, only an electric motor ever drives the front wheels. The petrol engine acts like a generator, not a thrust facilitator. Benefits, well, you get EV-like power and torque delivery. You've got this effortless one-pedal driving setup. Plus, there's no plug. You never have to plug it in, and you can refuel it as quick as a petrol car. The e-powertrain packs a much bigger wallop than the petrol-only Qashqai models, and it's faster from zero to 100 as well. But it's a bit weird because the engine's bigger than the standard and cheaper petrol model. 1.5 in this versus 1.3 in that model. Plus, it's also a heavier vehicle by around 200 kilos. And that's because you've got the inverter, the generator, the battery, and the electric motor in there. But its main draw card is low fuel consumption. Nissan claims it uses about 5.2 liters per 100 kilometers, which is around one liter less than that lighter petrol only version. Because it retains a 55 liter fuel tank, that means theoretical range is more than a thousand kilometers with a bit of hypermiling, I reckon. Apart from this gorgeous sci fi gear shifter, complete with sound effects, cool, and some EV buttons here, there are no tangible differences between this interior and the standard non hybrid Qashqai Ti. Now, that's not a criticism, far from it, because this interior is luxe. It's got a really nice fit out and feels very, very sophisticated and is one of the nicest interiors you'll find in a small Japanese SUV. There are several show-stopping highlights in this car and I'm gonna start with the seats, the leather quality of which is not too bad. I really like this diamond stitching, that's pretty lush, and the overall comfort and support levels are good, they're a little bit sporty, some bolstering, plus they're eight-way power adjustable for the driver and front passenger, and they're heated, and the best part, you've also got three different massage functions for both seats, not too shabby. Chuck in this huge single pane panoramic glass roof, a 10 speaker Bose stereo, a large wireless phone charging pad, and one, two, three digital screens. And you're looking at almost Lexus-like equipment levels in this small British built SUV. The three screens include a customizable 12.3 inch digital instrument display. A second 12.3 inch digital display lives here in the form of a central touchscreen and the visuals are sharp, touch response is really good and there is a third screen, a 10.8 inch heads up display that is excellent, very sharp, rich graphics, I like it. For a small SUV, rear seat room ain't too bad. I've got reasonable knee room. The feet and this gap here is a little bit annoying. It'd be nicer if the seats were a little bit more raised, but I guess then I would have no headroom and already it's a little bit tight. But look, the seats are comfy, amenity is good. You've got USB A and C. You've got air vents, reading lights, fold down armrests with cup holders, top tether anchorage, for the uh, child seats, ISO fix as well. And one of my favorite features are these doors. They open almost 90 degrees, which is fantastic if like me, you've got kids 
loading them in and out is so much easier with this. The gesture controlled and power operated tailgate reveals a surprisingly large boot. This is actually the same size as the regular petrol version. There is no compromise. And that's because the battery is not located under the boot like in some hybrids, it's actually located under the front seats. However, the one drawback is the fact there's no space saver spare tire. Instead, you get a puncture repair kit with the goop and the compressor and all that sort of stuff. Nissan's done a great job with the interior, but now it's time to see how this curious hybrid motivates. Cue the driving music. Like the Nissan X-Trail SUV, this is a much quieter and smoother vehicle to drive than a conventional petrol or diesel powered vehicle. And the main reason obviously is because it's only using an electric motor to drive the wheels. But there are more reasons to why this vehicle is super quiet. It's got an active noise cancelling system that works kind of like noise cancelling headphones using the subwoofer in the back to duplicate certain frequencies. It makes everything in the cabin a whole lot quieter. Turbo petrol engine has also been designed to be a lot quieter and that's because it has a variable compression ratio system. Essentially, it means it can achieve high levels of torque at lower revs. So when the petrol engine does kick in to recharge the battery or feed the inverter, it's basically gonna be a lot quieter than a conventional engine that's constantly revving up and out. This also means you don't get rev flare like you do in some hybrids, but when you do floor the throttle, acceleration is surprisingly good <laughs> but the real test of this car is going to be how fuel efficient it is the official claim is 5.2 liters per 100 kilometers i didn't quite get that but i got 5.5 liters per 100 kilometers which isn't too bad that's covering around 300 kilometers and a mix of urban and freeway driving and i definitely think it's more efficient in the urban environments that's where i saw the biggest drops in fuel efficiency i will say this though driving the regular cash car with the 1.3 liter non-hybrid turbo petrol engine i got 8.1 liters per 100k so 5.5 is a significant improvement when it comes to driving dynamics the e-power just misses the mark Nissan's engineering core apparently tweaked almost every element of the chassis. We're talking dampers, springs, anti-roll bars, bushes, but it doesn't really feel like it and it lacks the confidence of its cheaper Qashqai siblings. There's more body roll through corners and less tire grip when you increase the tempo. It's not a complete failure, but just not as good as its petrol only brethren. First impressions of this curious little electric drive hybrid SUV well, it's pretty good. It's impressive to drive. It's gonna cost you less to fill at the Bowser. And it's got a high quality upmarket vibe. Is it worth that extra $4,200 premium? Well, I'm still on the fence with that, but this is a launch drive and we will get the vehicle back to Car Sales HQ for a more in-depth, deeper dive to figure that out. So stay tuned for that.